This is Jake with Van Dyke Software, and I'm going to show you how to install our vShell file transfer and SSH2 access server. So here I am on my Windows 2016 server, signed in as an administrator, and I'm looking at Windows Explorer in the folder where I've downloaded the vShell installer. To start installing, I double click the installer. While I'm waiting for the MSI to be extracted, I'll minimize the Explorer window so it's not distracting. OK, here's the welcome screen for the installer. On this next screen, you see the license agreement for vShell. Read through it to get a sense of exactly what the license agreement allows. If you're in agreement, choose I accept and go to the next screen. The installer creates a start menu program group for vShell and an optional desktop icon for both the vShell control panel and vShell monitor. Since I'm running the installer as an administrator, I can make the shortcuts available for everyone on my machine or just for my account. I'm sticking with the default and moving on to the next screen. You don't have to customize anything, but I'm choosing the custom option here so I can show you what it looks like. For example, I want there to be desktop icons, so I'll enable that feature here. Note that if you need FIPS mode enabled for government security compliance, you can enable that here in the installer. The LSA authentication module is required if you want to support certificate or radius authentications. The Windows operating system loads authentication modules only at startup, so a reboot of the Windows machine will eventually be needed for public key or radius authentication to be successful. If you want to change where vShell program files are installed to, you can do that here. I prefer the default, so I'm going to the next screen. This screen gives me a summary of what I've selected and offers me the opportunity to go back and modify my selections if something in the summary doesn't look right. This looks good to me, so I'll press the install button and wait for the installation to complete. When the installation completes, I'm presented with a number of actions that can be taken as a convenience. To be notified when any newer versions of eShell are released, I can leave this option enabled and I'll be shown a web page where I can subscribe if I want. I don't need to see the README or the history files, but I'll leave the other selected for demonstration purposes. I press the Finish button and the first thing I see is this message about the need to restart Windows. This is so the LSA authentication module can be loaded by Windows. I'm going to defer the reboot until a maintenance window is available, so I'll say no, I will restart my computer later, and I'll click the OK button. Next, I see two things. One is the web page for being notified by email when new versions of eShell become available. The other is the vShell control panel, showing me that it's currently running in evaluation mode. If I have already purchased a license, I'll copy all my license data into the clipboard and press this Enter License Data button to have it automatically register vShell for me. If I'm evaluating, I agree to the terms of the license agreement and I'm presented with the vShell control panel along with a note to either generate or specify a certificate for use by the FTPS service. I'll do that soon enough, but for now, I'll just dismiss the message since I'm going to be working with SFTP, not FTPS, for the time being. Let's test to see if we can connect to vShell using an SFTP client. I'll open up a command window here and use the VSFTP client tool that is included in the installation. If I connect to localhost, I'll avoid any potential firewall issues, and I can easily see if vShell is listening and accepting connections. VSFTP minus V user at localhost. I'll accept vShell's host key, and now you can see I'm prompted for my password. I'll enter it, and boom, I'm connected to vShell. You can see that I'm placed by default in my documents folder. By default, vShell allows any legitimate local or domain Windows user account to authenticate and transfer files to wherever they have file system permissions to do so. This is so you can get started right away with testing. You will likely want to lock things down to restrict who can access what, but that's a different topic for another video. Well, there you have it, the basics of installing vShell on Windows and using VSFTP to verify that it's up and running. Stay secure, my friends.